Greetings my friends, welcome back to the Home Slice. Today we're taking the 40mm manila rope and measuring the dual grit performance on this edge, 400 grit Atoma. And I took the other side up to a Veneve 3 to 5 micron diamond stone with 25% concentration. Strapped it on stroppy stuff, each of these edges. This is the sort of all-purpose dual grit edge I've been using for my testing. I wanted to use the same style of edge from kind of like lower carbon steels all the way up through high carbon steels on this manila rope testing just to get a little bit of a spread and some broad strokes of how different steels perform with the dual grit edge. Now our super steels in this testing have been somewhat clustered around the 10 mark getting through the rope 10 times before they uh, get higher than 400 grams reading on a best sharpness tester. That's the sharpness tester you see me using there. Generally with a solid dual grit edge that's well suited for the steel, a knife will see from 20%. Some of them are even up to 100% increase in performance on this rope cut testing. I've taped the edges so that we have about the same amount of edge length, but do be aware that rope cut testing sort of rewards aggression because getting through those rope fibers is a lot easier if you have a really aggressive edge and it also prefers wear resistant steels. So some of those gains in dual grit edge, I'm not making the claim that a sharp, an edge sharpened coarse on one side and fine on the other will always be 100% higher performance. I'm just doing some fun testing to see which steels respond to it the best and what kind of edges perform best in this rope cut testing so that I can carry that data into my carrying and EDC to see what the feel and longevity of each kind of edge on each steel is in real world conditions. Our initial best readings on these particular knives are relatively high, but I've been finding that these diamond stropped edges get through the rope a little bit better, even though they start from a higher best number. I'm sharpening for aggression specifically and leaving coarse texturing in, and sometimes a dual grit edge has a little bit more coarseness or flexibility in the edge, and so you don't see the best numbers get ultra, ultra low on the first read. Wrapping up the test, we see that 8CR13 MOV cut the rope two times, 420HC cut the rope three times, and D2 has done six passes through the rope. I'm, I'm really pleased overall with this D2 considering the price. I, I feel like QSP does the best job of heat treatment that I have felt on D2 steel in any time in the recent past. So I think this is really a worthy contender. I think when it comes to the other two, three was a really average number when I was doing the Victorinox testing. So they've both sort of hit that low sort of normal amount of cuts. Does that mean 420HC and 8CR13 MOV Chinese steel are terrible steels overall? No, I don't think it does. I think the numbers I got back from some of the Victorinox tests were down in the threes, but by sort of carefully combining different stones for a more optimized combination of stones you sharpen it with, I got all the way up into the tens, which you would think that's super steel performance, but I think that the rope test also rewards a thin edge and the Victorinox knives were a lot thinner and it also sort of rewards a stable edge. So I know that may seem to most people as like, this is way too many variables to keep track of, but this testing has been really helpful for me just to have a reference point. I think that what this test tells me as we go to the graphs is that with these softer steels, if you're going to sharpen them with a dual grit edge, you'd probably benefit from mimicking the sort of edges that I settled on when I was doing the Victorinox testing. The diamond seemed to be a little bit difficult to deburr things fully. So I think you'd get a little bit better performance from your fine stone being like a traditional water stone. I think you get better damage cleanup and retained aggression characteristics from that. And to be honest, if a steel is really soft, I find that stropping it on a larger particle is helpful. So if you had some nine micron diamond, it might deburr it a little bit better than the one micron diamond I used on these. Or a really good budget stropping solution is some Mother's Mag uh, automotive polish loaded into some cut up blue jeans 
and you can put that on a flat surface and stick it down somehow that works for you and strop on that and it has just enough give to wrap that tip a little and get rid of the extra burr. Armed with this knowledge, I'm probably gonna take this 420HC and 8CR13 MOV and try that. Try just what I said, Mother's Mag on denim for the strop and a traditional whetstone for the fine side and see how the performance is in everyday cutting scenarios. And I'll probably report back to you guys in time. We've been looking at the numbers that these put up on the rope cut and the loss of best sharpness over time. Keep in mind that I list the best numbers as negatives so that it represents the falling of the line as the loss of sharpness where best numbers actually increase because it takes more pressure to cut the line, but it's more intuitive for me to look at the graph upside down to see the loss of sharpness as the line goes down. And it's very visually confusing to put all of the knives up that I have tested so far, though I will do a recap that has like all of the tests in one. Anyway, we've been looking at it against S35VN, which gave a really average reading on the fine reading, and that sort of puts to scale the performance of these. We've now transitioned to including the best reading that we have got so far, which was a whopping 40 cuts from Blank Blades CPM 10V. And uh, my friend Jason at Blank Blades makes some really amazing 10V, and he made me a knife. That's at nearly 67 Rockwell. So that's the best reading that we've had so far. And it really puts into perspective what edge retention can be. But then again, you have to keep in mind the things that I stated. It's not all directly linear, but it is interesting. Just with a bit of metallurgy, heat treatment, and edge finishing, the vast difference in measured performance in a rope cut test. Uh, there's another video on screen now if you guys want to see something else. For the rest of you, I'll say peace out from the home slice. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.